so yeah, this is this is I think it's an A3. <coughs> uh, if you look at the document setup, you can see. So yeah, it's A3 width landscape. But I've got the the basic document grid turned on. Now in InDesign, it's in here. It's grids and guides. And you haven't got that many. First, you've got the normal guides that you've used in Illustrator where you drag them in. And then you've got this uh, document grid, which just acts like graph paper that's light laid over. So you can hide it or show it with a shortcut. And then there's the other option, which is uh, snapping to the grid. So if you're moving things around, so if I enlarge that box there, see how it snaps to the nearest grid line almost kind of it doesn't you don't have depending on how the grid set up it won't just do the grid lines but it'll all, when you get close to one it'll snap to it which is really handy when you're setting stuff up so with this one all you're doing is you start with a rectangle frame tool because everything goes in a frame unlike Illustrator or Photoshop, where you just put the image on the page. In InDesign, you've got two. You've got choice. You can either make boxes to put things in, or when you place your image, well, you make you make a box like a frame to put something in, and you place an image in it, or you can just place an image on the page, and it will draw the frame while it puts the image in. So, if you want to kind of set something up, so you've got a particular grid or design in mind you might want to just lay it all out first before you actually put the images in. Which if, and if you've got a rough idea of how the images are working, so you know you've got particular shapes and things. And it can actually help you select final images as well. If you've got a nice kind of grid or a layout or something, you kind of reject images that don't fit in. So here, you can just draw in an extra box in there and it'll kind of just snap in <coughs> on there. And then when I come to actually add an image in. It's the same command in Illustrator when you're putting images on the page, you just place. And then now this will be get some nice images. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, see this can be a really raw unedited version. So JPEG uh, stuff. <laughs> right, this could be. So I've got some nice little <coughs> mood board, 60s type images. So all I did there on the mat was press the space bar and it'll give me a preview of it. And I should have done things like uh, right, you can, and now on the mat you can right click and rename a file. So it actually is something reasonable and understandable. You can actually select more than one, so like shift select, so I selected three there, click on open, and then you just go through, so I've got, you can probably see the little number three, there, so it shows three images, left and right arrow, will flick through the ones that are actually loaded onto the pointer, and if you want to drop, so for that one, nice vertical image, click in there, and it'll drop it in, it drops it in at 100% size, so if it's a big, high resolution image, it'll do it at full size. So what you can do is sort of work out, so the twiggy one there, nice horizontal image, so I'll stick that in there. And okay, that might not work. Uh, let me stick that in there. So if I want to go back, really quick way of uh, fitting everything. If you select the object, you've got these little uh, buttons up here, or you can right click or control click with the Mac bring up the fitting menu there. And what you want to do is uh, fill frame proportionally. So it'll keep it in proportion and it will make it completely fill the box. So one side will be trimmed and the other side will perfectly fit in it. Nice little shortcut there. Old shit for the piano players amongst you. And there you go, now for some. Now, sometimes that's actually fitted in. Now that image has a white border on it. So you can see where it hasn't quite worked out there. I'll just go around and do those ones there. You can also use the buttons up here. So fill frame proportionally. And they're all the different fitting options. So how that 
image fits that frame. Because this is the confusing thing in InDesign if uh, compared to Illustrator and uh, Photoshop is you've got two parts. You've got the frame that holds the image and you've got the image itself. And it can be a bit confusing working out between the two. So the blue frame crops the image, in, image and is how you move it around the actual page and the brown one, so you can see the little brown frame there. When I hover over the middle, I can select the actual image by clicking on the circle, hopefully. You know what, that is so big, that image is so big, I couldn't actually see, so that's like an A3 page, that must be like A2, A2 size. I'll just turn off the grid, just to make it easier to see. See, once you've set up the grid like that, it's kind of, you don't need any more, it's easy to see. So there, so I can just go fill frame proportionally. Now, you can see where the brown line is, so it's, it's filled it width-wise. Nice little sneaky trick to actually pull that down, because I kind of want to see a, see a face. I could just drag it down, or use the arrow keys to nudge it down. If you hold the shift key down, when you use the arrow keys, it'll jump 10 oh. times further. So there I can get, I mean, I won't go fancy pants on it, but that's, it's not a great crop. But And the same thing here. But I need to enlarge that a bit more. So to enlarge it, and that's where you need to work on the image. Like you do with a lot of things, you just drag the corner, but you need to keep it in proportion. So click and hold for a second. If you do a little half second hold, when you start dragging, see how you get the ghost so it shows you how it's cropping. If I hold down the shift key to keep it in proportion, but also because I kind of want it to go from the center, remember the alt key enlarges from the center. So all I'm going to do is just make it slightly bigger. So you can see where the ghost of the image has just gone over the edge now. So now it's a nice crop to the edge there. And I'll just center it, just a few clicks on the arrow key. Decent problem. Don't play around with that properly. And that one actually works reasonably well, actually. If you want to, this nudging thing is quite handy, and you know, it's the same thing when you're doing stuff in Illustrator, when you sort of click on a point or have something just to move it very slightly. What you can do with the nudging is uh, set it in your preferences. Uh, now, depending on which app you're in and what tool you've got selected, sometimes the preferences button will appear up here. On the Mac, it's underneath the uh, InDesign menu. On the PC, it'll be under at the bottom of the edit menu here. Uh, so you want to look for your general preferences. Uh, oh, no, hang on, sorry. Uh, see, <laughs> in Illustrator and Photoshop, you look at your general um, your general preferences. And in Illustrator, it is in, uh, yes, it's in units and increments, keyboard increments. And that's the distance something moves when you... Uh, so that cursor key there, it's going to move a quarter of a millimetre when I press one of the arrow keys. If I hold on the shift key, it'll be ten times that. So it'll be two. I might actually, sometimes, I, usually in Illustrator, I have that set really low, so like one of a millimetre. And then you can use, you know, if you're pressing shift and the arrow key, it'll be one millimetre at a time. Uh, so and you basically just go through and do that. Or what you can do is, and once you've got it all set up, you can use all your smart guides. So when I pull it up like that, it'll automatically snap onto that grid to line that up there. If you want to bring in your own pictures uh, and just from fresh without putting them into a box, so maybe I'll just get rid of those. I'll leave that one in there, but I'll get rid of those. I'll use that space. So I can just use the same file place command and then just go and get... So I'll get that. I'm just going down with the arrow key. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Right, so I'll use those ones. Uh, so again, uh, I didn't uh, this time to get ones that aren't together. Hold down the command key or control on the PC just to select odd ones. Click on open. Same thing happens. I've got two pictures there. I think that might work in there. So I'm going to make this purposely slightly off-center. When you drag it in, it will keep in proportion to the shape of your original picture. So as I'm dragging it, it's going to force it to do that kind of 
So I say I'm going to do it so it's the full width. It'll drop it in. Uh, I'll just drop that one. See, this is why this is why sometimes it's easier to uh, have your boxes, your frames to go in first. I'll just drag that in like that to start with. I'll play with it later on. So just to edit Diana. So if I was trying that sneaky way, I'll just put these all together so they're kind of overlapping and not quite using the grid this time. I'll take that out. So just to show that thing about using the the rule. So there I've enlarged the frame but I've got a bit missing there so I'll just click on the circle in the middle and just nudge it over. Trouble is it's going to lose this bit here so I'll do what I did with the one on this side and I'll just hold that corner, shift, alt, and just give it a new drop and then just shift down arrow just to jump it down. So I'm purposely kind of mashing this up a bit so I'll put those in there maybe. You can do the same thing, so this whole idea of the frame and the image with the blue frame, that's the crop. So if I reduce that like I did before, it just reduces uh, the crop. Or I can reposition the image by dragging it and do that. Or if I click on the brown, that's where I click on the circle, it brings up the brown one, and that's why I'm repositioning the actual image within the uh, window. You can combine the two. So if I want to get that to roughly fit in that hole there, if I just position it over, if I hold down the command key and then click on that, well, with the blue frame selected, click on that bottom right-hand corner. So normally if I move that, it would just recrop it like that. I'll do that. So if I hold down the command key, click and hold, hold down the shift key and the alt key. So shift and alt, Shift's keeping it in proportion, Alt's doing it from the middle, and Command is in reducing them both, or allowing me to do both at the same time. So it's resizing the picture and the frame. So what I'll do, I'll do it slightly bigger, because it's got that sort of film edge there. I'll move that into space there. I mean, I could do something simple, like send it to the back. So if you uh, object, arrange, send to back and it automatically crops because it's behind everything else. But it's still a bit kind of ropey where everything is sort of, well, not quite over. Let's make it more of a mess. So it, there you go. And if you do something like that where, so I've just brought that to the front there, sort of slightly. So if you want to, sometimes getting all the grids and everything in the way and all the little kind of boxes, you want to get rid of them. Press the W key, and it will just get rid of all the lines and all. So that is that's the kind of print preview. So that's what it's going to look look like without all the bits and bobs sticking all over. And if you've got anything over the edge of the page, it'll even trim it off the edge of the page like that. So that shows you that there. So that's like how the page will work. So the W key, which is also this little option down here, in the uh, at the very bottom of the toolbox. So normally you're on normal and click and preview. So W just goes between the two there. Apart from if you're writing any text and obviously it's going to type the W key. Which is, so. so now, if I zoom in a little bit, you can see where I kind of want to tidy. I mean, I've got, I got lucky a bit here because these images are actually worked together quite well in terms of how they blend in there. but. I'll just make it a bit more of a mess. So the trick with the just putting the uh, the path over there, depending on which how you feel comfortable, either pen tool or line segment tool, select it, go and get your stroke set up, and I'll give it. I'll make it five millimeters so it's fairly thick. And even though it was in points of stroke, I can actually type in mm there. I'll give it a flat cap at the end. And then uh, make sure the colour down here. Uh, in InDesign, the colours are rather than being up here, your colours are here in the middle. And that's your stroke colour. So I'll just go for it. And it's paper rather than white. So when that does print, it'll print whatever the colour of the paper it is. It won't actually, it'll print nothing. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's because InDesign is, uh, it's all based around printing inks and stuff like that. So. So I've got a five millimeter stroke 
that's white. So literally just draw, if I draw, and I'll shift as I drag it down. So I'll just draw the rough lines in there, one across there, one down there. And every time I click and drag and hold shift, I'll do one in there. If it makes it easier when you're doing the drag, do it in a bright color and you can just change it back. Uh, now, in Illustrator, there's a nice little technique where I've got I've got a bunch of five millimeter thick white strokes, and uh, there's an option in the select menu which you don't have in InDesign where you can select all the same thickness of stroke, so it's easy to pick them all up. Whereas for this, I'll although you have got your layers panel, which is similar to how it works in Illustrator, it's not quite as involved. I'm just like shift clicking on the little targets and it's picking up each one of these lines. I'll make them into I'll make a magenta so they show out to start with. So all I'll do is just click on that one and just nudge it into place there just so it takes over that gap there. Same one for that one as well. I think that's about right because they just slightly overlap. It doesn't matter about them overlapping here because of course I'm gonna go Shift, click, select all those. Actually, group them together. It's, it's a group. How uh, do you group again? Oh, sorry, yeah. Uh, object, group. Mm. So, Command G and then ungroup. So, yeah, sorry, shortcut. Mm. <laughs> Learn your shortcuts from the start. So, that's all one group there. It's still a bit like, you know, a bit like in uh, Illustrator. It still yeah. puts it all together. I'm wondering in Illustrator how to group. Uh, so now, even though they group together, I can just go and change the stroke for all of them. And then I think there, that little line there, might be out. So I'll just let you do this uh, illustrate. I'll just click on the point at the end and I'll just move it in slightly. So now it's properly overlapping that line there. So now if I do that fit in window, it's all nicely. So that's actually, that's what I was saying. Now in Photoshop, yeah, that's what I was saying earlier, sorry, about uh, if the grid works, yeah, mm -hmm. but otherwise you just slap them all together and then just draw the same line over. In Photoshop, it's a bit harder to draw strokes because Photoshop kind of, because the strokes are, vector, are done on vectors or the paths are done on vectors, mm -hmm. which is kind of an extra bit on top of Photoshop, you, you, you draw the path but it becomes what they call a work path. So it's like a group of paths. It's not all separated out like it is in Illustrator. And then you have to apply a stroke in pixels to that path. So it's a bit more fiddly. But And then, of course, once you've done... Well, I've ruined that by uh, off-centering it. So all I'll do is just drag it all, and I'll just shift, shift it to the middle. You've got things like a line and stuff like that up here, like yeah, you know, so you can align objects with each other and stuff like the same as if you've got in uh, Illustrator. So if I move that in the middle, roughly. every uh, <coughs> every mood board needs a title. That's a text box. The reason I know it's a text box <laughs> is because image boxes have crosses through them. Text box has text in them. So if I just double click in that. The way I drew that text box originally, get the text tool and let's just drag a box shape and then that'll be like you do in Photoshop or you can do in Photoshop. And then all the text will fit within that box. If I go back, what I might do is just move that box over so it lines up with the grid a bit more. You can even do things like uh, you can position it using the position, actual, if you want it in this particular position off the page, so X across, Y down, type it in there. Uh, double click, so at the moment I've got it selected. If I double click on it, it'll select the type tool automatically, and I can just start typing. Uh, I will do something really boring like 60s fashion. Uh, there's shortcuts for enlarging, or I can just use the font uh, the font size here. So I'll sort of take it up. Quite far. Don't be afraid to be big and bold. 
Right, and the trick is, of course, to find an appropriate typeface. Uh, you might know the typeface. I mean, uh, Avenir is actually quite popular at the moment. It's a kind of pseudo. It's got that. It's got that kind of modern sort of feel that's popular now, but it's also got that kind of retro-ish feel in that context. And this is the kind of thing with choosing fonts and typefaces is you don't have to go for something super 60s style to actually make the point because your mood board or your images should be the main story. Mm. So it's more like giving something to support it and help it rather than just go, you know, hit people over the head with it. Because you could go, I mean, this is a 30s typeface, but it's got that kind of retro fit. Too much. Okay. Too much. Yeah, I mean, Bau well, Bauhaus is, from a design point of view, it's kind of... A classic, but no. Uh, I mean, there are some really overly 60s ones available. Uh, the one I'm thinking of might not be here. Oh. Uh, but I mean, bear in mind, a lot of 60s fashion, and sort of later 60s fashion, where it gets a bit more military and all that kind of thing, is kind of, it's pulling up on this sort of, and this is what fed into sort of glam era as well, it's sort of like that kind of Hollywood star kind of thing of like 30s and 50s. You kind of got like, there's a big uh, Art Deco and uh, Art Nouveau kind of revival going on and also all that kind of 30s, like uh, dish style movement type stuff. If you think uh, Yves Saint Laurent and the, uh, the uh, Mondrian sack dress, which is, when is it, uh, Autumn 65, uh, that was sort of started a whole big uh, throwback to that. But yeah, like I say, I mean, even though it's a heading and you kind of want to be uh, quite, uh, uh, I don't know, it gives you a message, I think something a bit more sedate and relaxed. I mean, you could even use a kind of a classic uh, Helvetica type thing. Heavy on here? No, just bold. You know, it's like that kind of thing like that. Can you make the boxes like different shapes? Or would you have to get an app for that? Like, could you do circles? If, absolutely. There are a set of different shape boxes. So you've got uh, lips and polygon gone as well. So mm -hmm. multi sided. Oh, that's how I've been seeing the polygon. So, well, press the W, I'll go over here and. With the polygon, it'll all, I think it starts with a six. And you can do multiple ones as well. I'm doing up and down arrow. Mm. So you can actually do a grid of them as well. Hold down the shift key. Yeah. It'll be in proportion. Loads of people have got polygons in the right now. So I was wondering. So yeah, if you want a whole grid of polygons, so you can uh, hold the shift key there. <coughs> so that's one, four. So I'm going up arrow to add a row and cross arrow to add a column and then pull larger. I've got the shift key held down. This is where you need to be a bit of a genius in terms of if you play the piano and stuff. And that is a grid of six, sorry, nine, I can count, uh, nine images. So you can do them all in there. And you can you can still use them as separate objects. And do things like offset them. Although with all the different lines going on, it can yeah. send you a bit squiffy. Uh, and also, yes, ellipsy business. So you can do a oval or shift for a circle. And uh, also things like if you use the direct selection tool, you've got the same sort of two tools you've got in Illustrator. So you can click on an individual point and pull it in cool. to change the shape like that. So. Which one? That was the direct selection tool, the white arrow. Ah. It, same sort of principle as you've got in Illustrator. So the black selection tool, direct, uh, the main selection tool, will select a whole object. Mm -hmm. And then the the only difference is, in the older versions of Illustrator, like it's going back a few years, you just have to use a separate tool to select the actual image. They separate it out. So to select the frame, the black selection tool, to select the image, 
So I click on the frame there, it automatically selects uh, the image itself because I've got the direct selection tool. But I can't, it, was, it was a while ago, but they changed it so this little thing comes up so you can just swap between the two. But yeah, the direct selection tool, like it does in Illustrator, you can actually pick up an individual point there. So I can pull that one in like that. You can do things like, uh, yeah, and you can do it with a text box as well. So if you wanted to run text, uh, so if you get a type, a type tool, so maybe you want to run text and then go in there and just run it so it goes over like that. That kind of thing. So I'm literally just left and right arrow there to get it. So the text will run along there. Mm -hmm. So if I hit the escape key, ah, oh sorry, I'm in there. Uh, yeah, type key there. So now I can put all my text in there. There's a really handy thing for if you're doing layouts with text in and you don't know what the actual content's going to be. Uh, if you go to the type menu, this option here, fill with placeholder text, and it'll just fill it with a oh. bunch of gobbledygook. Uh, but you can also, if you know, you might want to play around with kind of type font styles and stuff. So if I go back and use my Helvetica, but because it's going to be written text, like body text, I'll just use the regular. And I might even take it down a little bit. I'd, you're usually better off, depending on what it is, if this was going to be something printed or something we'd see, see on a screen or sort of close up, go for something a bit less. Like most magazines will have their, their, cop, their body copies, they call it, sort of 10, even 9 point. Essay type stuff is usually sort of 12 point. And depending on how it's appearing on the page, you know, if that was part of your mood board like a presentation, you might want to go up a bit higher. So I'll try 24. And then I can just go, so I've got Helvetica, regular. I might even make it just medium. So it's halfway between bold and normal. And then I'll just go type, fill with placeholder text, and just fill that up with stuff. And look, we have hyphens that have popped up all over the place. So if you want to get rid of hyphens, uh, you can either select all the text like that, or you can just have the text box selected. And you want to do want to find the paragraph panel. Now it's hidden, well, because there's so many type panels, they've got them on their own little fly out menu. Or, and there's paragraph styles or paragraph, you want just the paragraph. So it works with, a paragraph is a whole bunch of text with an enter in between. So, you know, different chunks of text. Character level works on individual or groups of characters. So if you want to bold one word or italicize one word. So for paragraph, I don't want to have any hyphenation in that paragraph. It's that little fella there. Oh. It gets rid of them all. Now, because I've got the whole box selected, I can actually go, and any even though I haven't got the characters selected, because the whole box is selected with the selection uh, tool, notice how none of the font stuff comes up in the control bar at the top, because I'm selecting a box, so it's all to do with like position and size and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I can still apply a character style to everything in that box. So if the font's too big, maybe take it down, something a bit less hectic, or maybe something slightly wrong. And because I haven't got any space there, I'll just go and do the placeholder text again. And it'll just literally just fill everything up. That isn't a good way of actually producing text, especially to read that amount of text because that whole thing about when your line when your eye goes to the end of a line, it goes back to a different place each time. It's that kind of thing with the type, you know, old school typewriters and the mm -hmm. cartoons, they kind of follow along and bing back the same place. Bing. Whereas here you just it just drives people nuts subconsciously. So if you were going to do something like that, you'd be better off having it the other way around. So you'd have the, the diagonal on this side. Because having a ragged side Mm. Plus, I mean, sometimes for things like that, if you want to make it a bit neater, you might, and this is what, how it works in magazines and stuff, you might just type in or just rewrite a little bit, so the, or delete words or edit it slightly to actually push things along. So this is just junk Latin text, so I could literally just copy a random word 
paste in there. You see that fills up quite nicely. Yeah. Yeah, and you can literally go and edit it in so it kind of you get a nice little shape of text. But that's kind of fiddly, fiddly kind of stuff. Right.